Hey, my name is Anna. I'm 22 years old. I just finished my second year of dental school, and for the past 30 days, I worked out every day. Here's what happened. Now I'm not gonna show you all 30 days, just a week of my life, what I eat, and my workouts. You have to know I love food, particularly pancakes in every shape and form: peanut butter, chocolate, strawberries, rice, bread, pasta. I'm pretty much a walking carb, to be completely honest. But my relationship with food has not always been like that. I either overate or starved myself with heavy diets. But no matter what I did, it strained my relationship with food. This year, I decided I wanted to change things. I started working out every day, started waking up early, started eating whatever my body told me to, and I thought, hey, why not show the world the change? Not the physical change. My whole life, I was focused and obsessed with how I looked. If I had abs or slim legs, but all of that did more harm than good. I'm talking about mental change, your changing your mindset, your relationship with your own body, and your view on life. So, let's go. Lose an hour in the morning, and you will be all day hunting for it. So we are starting this week on a Monday, and to be honest, I used to hate Mondays. But ever since this panini started, my relationship with Mondays has become so much better, which is great. In January, I decided I wanted to be more productive, and my solution for that was simple: wake up earlier. Final season was right around the corner, and I knew I wanted to invest good work into my classes and exam preparation. And I felt like I was trapped inside of a cycle of waking up late and staying up late, and I was literally tired of it. So I decided it was time to wake up earlier. I think I'm gonna do a Caroline Gervin workout. What about full body hit in tens, 32 minutes? Am I going to regret this? Totally. But let's go. Another great thing of waking up early is that I get the time to work out in the mornings. I used to tell myself that I would hate working out early, that I wouldn't have the energy for it. But to be honest, I lied. It was just the perfect excuse to not work out at all because I had so many other more important things to do during the hours that were left. But now I'm starting my days with energy, and I'm giving my very best, sweating hard, and feeling so good after finishing my workouts. Where I used to fear that it would tire me out, it actually gives me so much more energy and helps me kickstart my days. Even though these masterpieces right here could make you think otherwise. Since I started waking up earlier, I fell in love all over again with breakfast. I have always seen breakfast as a necessity, something that was obligatory and that I felt like I had to eat. What can I say? I have been and will always be a dinner girl. I just like a big warm meal at night, even though everyone else around me, besides my mom, disagrees. But now that I'm waking up early, I have to eat. It's my post-workout meal, and the longer that I have been working out for, the hungrier I am getting after my workouts. I don't track. I don't count calories, but I used to. I just eat whatever my body tells me to. Usually, it says pancakes with peanut butter and strawberries. Sometimes it suggests an oatmeal. Sometimes my inner German comes out, and I just crave bread, maybe with some avocado or eggs, whatever it may be. I don't tell my body no. I just make sure it's filling and it has enough protein in it to give my muscles fuel. Eating intuitively is something we have forgotten how to do. We eat by set times with set meal templates. We cook with portion sizes we find in recipes or tracking apps. We have gotten so mindless about what we eat. To be honest, deleting my tracking apps has been one of the best decisions I have ever made. Last year, I had gained weight super fast because of my thyroid, and to lose it, I tracked my calories, ate in a deficit, and you know what? The results were not worth the saying no to a cookie, saying no to another plate of pasta when I still felt hungry, or starving all day to eat a burger at night. We have to stop destroying our bodies with heavy and crazy diets. Stop destroying our relationship with food. It's a necessity for life. It gives you energy and it makes you happy. Whether that may be a zero percent yogurt or ice cream is completely up to you. Just know that there are no set rules to live by. If it scares you, it might be a good thing to try. Waking up early scared me. Motivating myself every day to work out scared me. Studying every day scared me because I thought I would have to push myself to do it, that I would hate it and I would never keep on doing it. I was wrong. I love to literally seize my days, getting a lot of work done and being able to just chill at night. It might seem like the most normal thing to some of you, but for me, it has been a strange concept for 22 years. As I already mentioned, final season was what really pushed me to change my life. 
I'm currently at the end of my fourth semester in dental school and about to start the third year and let me tell you, shit is about to go down. I'm just a lonely fuck to you. Studying dentistry is hard. You have to study a lot and nurture your mind and you have all these practical classes that you have to pass as well. With both my parents being dentists and graduating from the same school that I'm currently attending, the pressure is high. And yes, I do pressure myself, especially because I have never been good at studying. I used to be good at school, but not because I studied a lot. I excelled in classes that were based on understanding, and the others I just unsubscribed to when I had the chance to after year 10. I have a natural talent and love with and for languages, which you might be able to tell since this video is done in English and not in German. And the German school system is filled with languages, writing essays, interpreting poems, letters, books, you name it. One could say I had it easy in high school and I wouldn't disagree. When I started dental school though, I had to figure out that I couldn't go on like this, studying the night before an exam and expecting to pass because I just had the overpowering confidence that I was naturally smart. You know what that led me to? I failed the theoretical part of my biggest class of the first semester and had to retake it and rewrite the exam during the second semester. On top of that, I failed my first anatomy exam and had to retake that one as well. Those things were my wake-up call. I knew I never wanted to feel that way again. Helpless and angry at myself. Spoiler, I did. Because failing in class or an exam is normal. And if it pushes you to work harder, it might be a good thing that it happened. Life shouldn't be just about school, but I dream big. I have goals and some people might call me a megalomaniac because of them, but I believe in myself. If I don't do it, no one else will. So I have to study. I don't have to be on top of my class, I have to make myself proud, which is easier said than done because dentistry, at least at my school, is so competitive. So many smart people in one room and everyone wants to show off with their intelligence and talent. I try not to compare myself, but it happens. It's normal to compare yourself, whether that may be how you look in comparison to others or what you achieve. But remember, no one else matters, just you, because you are all you got. Work hard for your dreams, study for hours, but don't forget to eat, drink and sleep, and just turn your brain off for a reset. Ah, uh, working out. My most passionate love-hate relationship. I have never been one of those kids that were just passionate about sports ever since kindergarten. I struggled finding an afternoon sport after school. I either didn't enjoy it or the people in the group made me uncomfortable. So I quit. Right now, it honestly makes me sad and angry to admit that I have been a quitter, but I didn't like to go the tough road. I wanted my life to be easygoing. Quitting sports, by the way, didn't help. I started training again at the age of 17, right when I graduated high school. I eventually joined a gym, subscribed to workout programs, and kind of developed a routine just to fall right back out again. Then I eventually started training with a personal trainer, which I enjoyed so much. From that time, I have learned that I train best when someone else motivates me. I like taking classes, but only during vacation because at home I struggle with aligning my own schedule with the classes that my gym offers. My friends? Well, I'm sorry guys, but almost none of you work out. So it was always me at my gym, but hey, I still showed up because this is my life and I won't make my workouts depend on someone else. If I feel like working out, I will. Maybe I should thank my dad. Working out during a panini is challenging. Right when I got back into the habit of training at a gym consistently, all the gyms had to close. I still had my sweat app and during March and April 2020, I would continue working out with the home programs that the app offers. When the gyms would eventually reopen, I was back on the grind, going five days a week, doing 12 30, 30 by Lauren Giraldo on top of weight training every single time. Looking back at my Apple fitness data, my fitness life during summer 2020 was lit. Then the second panini wave hit Germany, and on the 1st of November, everything had to close again, and I was lost. I stopped working out, and it made me sad, but for the wrong reason. 
I wasn't sad because I missed the activity and powering myself out. I was sad because I wouldn't reach my active calorie goal of 550 burnt calories per day anymore. I would get obsessive over the amount of food I ate, making my own self feel bad for my food choices and cravings. I eventually started fasting, eating only one meal per day, and I finally lost all those kilograms that I had gained during the summer because I had stopped taking my thyroid meds on a wrongful doctor's advice. And I was so happy, but at the same time, so tired. One day, 2021, my life changed. I don't know what happened, if I became more positive or if the world just did a 180, but suddenly all those food and exercise positive videos popped up and I recommended my Pinterest was showing me uplifting quotes and I knew now's the time for change. I wanted to fall in love with exercise. I started working out every day in the mornings with YouTube workouts. They really give me that personal trainer feeling which I love and which makes me stick with it. I started out with Heather Robertson, then added Lily Sabri, Anna, and eventually Sydney Cummings to the mix. I now alternate between those powerhouses of women depending on my mood each day. It's been a day, stressing out like crazy, just wanna be lazy. Almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. Another thing that I've learned during those past 30 days is that relaxing and taking a break is just as important as staying on the grind. Your body needs sleep, it needs study breaks, it needs food. It won't work if you don't charge it. It's easy to forget about these things when your adrenaline kicks in, you're getting nervous because your exams are just a blink away and you feel like you still know nothing. I saw it in myself and I saw it in my friends too. You just forget about food. You tell yourself, oh, just one more chapter, just one more hour, dinner will be my reward for finally memorizing this or that i'll just drink something sugary because that will fill me up until then you might be able to push through with that until your exams but afterwards your body might break down and you have to ask yourself is it worth it get your healthy we reach a certain breaking point. You can compare it to the 20% battery notification your phone sends you. Uh, From then on, our energy decreases rapidly and we need to charge. Studying past this point usually is everything but efficient. If you are tired, take a break. A 20 minute break can change your whole entire day. Take a power nap, have a snack, make yourself a cup of tea. Sometimes we have to distance ourselves from the things we focus on to have a better view. This year, I had to learn that everything I had been telling myself when it came to my own productivity was a lie. I don't study better at night. I don't work well under pressure if it means starting the night before an exam, and I am not, not a morning person. I get motivated at night because I feel the pressure of another day ending and not have gotten anything done yet. But that doesn't mean that my work is great. Waking up early and studying before noon helped me big time with my anatomy exam this semester. I might work well under pressure, but that doesn't mean that I have to wait up until the very last minute. If I space out my studying time, I get more breaks and I can spend my nights watching Netflix or scrolling through Instagram without feeling bad. And that again makes me feel like I still have a life besides school. Your private life is just as important. Don't forget about that. For the last day of the week, I wanted to speak about results. I guess that's why the majority of you might have clicked on this video in the first place anyways. You want to see results. What happens to a body when it works out every day? Will there be apps? Will we see definition? Will there be change? I try to find a good quote about results to close this video off, but none of them appeal to me. They were all so negatively positive and reminded me of those trainers that would try to motivate you during class by telling you that if you just push through for five more minutes, you could eat a piece of cake. I don't have to work out for that. If my body wants cake, I will have a piece of cake. Stop enforcing such a negative mindset when it comes to deserving food.
I'm not in for that anymore. That's why I won't show you crazy results and I never actually took a before and after picture or accurately way to measure myself. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I wanted to achieve a change in my mindset, that I wanted to improve my relationship with food and exercise, and that I wanted to overcome the overpowering fear of weight gain. It's been 24 minutes. Ow! My leg. I'm like 70 years old. I'm sorry. The week that I decided to show you was right in the middle of those 30 days. They are now over and yes, I still work out every day. Because I truly enjoy it and couldn't picture my mornings without my workouts anymore. I used to hate high intensity workouts, but nowadays, those are my favorites. I love to feel like I'm about to collapse, having a wet back and greasy hair 24 seven because of the sweat. And I have finally reached a point where I can say I don't work out for the calories anymore. I would lie if I would say that I completely ignore them, but they don't control my day. I look forward to working out every morning and out of 30 days, I may have had five where I felt low energy, but as soon as I press that play button, the energy kicked right back in. If you really want to know, I actually gained two kilograms. And yes, at first when I saw the number on the scale, I was scared and angry and desperate and it set me back for a day. All the things I thought that I had achieved, they seem to be gone. I finished studying for today and I'm about to watch a new K-drama now, just called Run On. The day I stepped on the scale, I caught myself mentally tracking calories when I looked at food and thinking about how much of a deficit I might need to lose weight, but I had to stop myself. Ever since I've changed all of these things that I've told you about in this video, I'm feeling so much better. I actually don't feel bad when I eat ice cream. At least 80% of the time I don't. I eat and I enjoy food and I enjoy cooking and I think personally this has been life changing. I've really craving for something sweet and it's 10.15 and I just started to make blondies. Recipes by Healthful Radiance I'm gonna show you. That's what happens on a Sunday night and I hope they're going to be good. Like they look delicious and the Instagram- So I decided pictures. that the number doesn't matter. It's the feeling that matters. You shouldn't bully your own body. If you don't love yourself and support yourself, then all those other people that might, they don't matter because you are the one taking care of your body. Just remember all the great things it's doing for you, all the things you have done throughout your life and that you're planning to do furthermore. No matter what, exercise and food shouldn't control your days, your feelings, and your mood in a negative way. They should enhance your life, enrich in it. Life is about more than a number on a scale. It's about happiness and inner peace and self-love and pancakes and sweating and pasta and rice and pastries and chocolate and ice cream. Go and eat something nice. Take a nice long walk in the sunshine and meet your friends, socially distance, of course, and continue to live your best so life, good. no matter what that may be. Rolling with my on the west side.